Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about Hexa again. Uh, someone uh, sent me a message and they said, you know, you've done four videos on Hexa using grinding wheels, but you never once mentioned about the file. And I thought, yeah, okay. <laughs> so... I thought it might be a good idea to talk about the file and uh, and maybe a little bit about grinding as well. So, but more about the filing. So the first thing is that if you are thinking of going to Hexa, it is reported that it cuts ten percent faster than full chisel, and full chisel cuts about twenty percent faster than semi chisel. So therefore. A 20% gain over semi-chisel is quite a fair bit. But it's not going to really make a major difference in my day because if I spend half my time cutting, half my time stacking up wood, 20%, I don't know, it could be half an hour or so. So you know, I'm going to spend four or five hours out there in the field. What's another 20, 30 minutes? It really doesn't make much difference to me. But... For professionals, time is money, so yeah. And if it means that you can get uh, through your cutting day quicker, well, I guess that's a bonus. So that's another way of looking at it. So if you are thinking or have had the thought on your mind, should I go to Hexa, but you don't want to do it the way that I do on a grinder, it's too much mucking around, uh, and you're thinking of maybe getting a file, so you can get yourself a hexa kit like this. This one I got in September 23. I paid $110 for it. It comes with two chains. If you open it up, it comes with two chains, a file and a handle. So all you need. Now, interesting enough, uh, I did a bit of a drawing where we look at a normal, uh, whether it's a semi-chisel or, but in this case it's a full chisel, and you look at the file coverage, how much the circular file touches the C, in the C-shape, and it's roughly about 33%. Then we look at the hexa, and the hexa is about the same, but what you've got to remember that you've got 120 degrees on these two corners, and you've got 122 degrees on these two corners. Now, 60 degrees each side. But it's only this side coming in. So that's the, the top plate cutting angle coming in. And that downward angle down to the bottom of the gullet, that's the other 60 degrees. So that makes it up. Now, on the bottom of the file, it's just flat so that it rides on there. So when you buy a hexa chain... The bottom of the gullet is just ground flat. And I don't know whether... I've probably got to lower this. Oh, look, if you looked in my other videos, uh, I've got a tooth. I'll, sh I'll show you this one. I've, this is one that I made up. It's not exactly to size, but the hexa file will sit the flat part on the bottom. So you're 60 degrees in, you're 60 degrees coming down, and... The flat part of the file sits on here. And that means it sounds simple that you could hold the file. We'll just go, zoom in there. It sounds simple enough that you can just hold the file. Now, when you actually look at the file, uh, we'll see whether you can get whether this actually shows you everything. But there's the little ridged raised section on the top there. So if you to turn the file at the front and you to turn it over 180 degrees, you'll find out that the bottom of the file doesn't have, it's just flat steel. There's no file part to it. So you've got left and right. There's your left and right. And there's your left and your right again. So your, your file has a left side and a right side with your 120 degree file on it so that it fits nice into the tooth. Now, what I did before was, this is a brand new hexa chain 
never been used straight out of the box. And I wanted to see how good that the file matched up with a couple of strokes. Well, it took about six strokes of the file before it actually made perfect contact with the tooth. So I don't know whether we can see that. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. We'll see whether we can. So if you can see that, that's where the file made contact. And you can see the bottom where it's flat. You see that pretty good how it's flat there. And if we go to a normal ground, factory ground, so there's normal factory ground. So running the file through the hexa took about six light strokes before that file came with 100% contact. You can see just down the bottom there where it just missed a little bit. I think you could just see that where my fingernail is. Right down the bottom on the right-hand side, you can see a little dark patch where the file still hasn't touched the edge. So that was about six light strokes. So that brings in a slight other little problem. If you were using, it doesn't matter whether you're using the steel USG grinder or whether you're using... Uh, an Oregon grinder and dress the wheel. No matter how good you are, you could be a machinist. And if you looked in my last video, number four, you'll see how I dressed the wheel and I had the 120 degree angle. But it will not be perfect. Doesn't matter how good you are, unless it's done on a CNC machine or, or, or special equipment, There'll be errors in the grinding wheel. Whether it's a steel USG wheel or whether it's the one that you do yourself, you'll never get it perfect. So therefore, you're wasting your time using a file uh, on the, the chains that have been ground from a grinder because the file will not match perfectly and it will mean that you've got to do a lot of extra passes to try and do that. So my personal opinion is that if you buy a still hexa chain and you want to use a file, just continue using the file. If you're using the grinding wheels, you will find out that the file, even though that it will look pretty good to your eye, it could be a half a degree out or, or it'll be enough out that you'll have to do a lot more additional passes with the file before that hexagonal part is uniform. Because the whole idea of using the file is that you want the edges of the hexa to be razor sharp. That includes the top plate, the downward uh, top plate cutting angle coming in at 60 degrees, and the down angle, 60 degrees, going down to the gullet. These edges need to be razor sharp. This is another problem with any filing, that you must make sure that you're holding your file. With hexa, it's 25 degrees top plate angle. So it's 25 degrees there. So there's 90 degrees. We move it over uh, in, into that position uh, to 20, uh, 25 degrees. So, yeah. So, if, well, sorry, if we actually turn around and hold that perpendicular, which is 90 degrees, let's just say that this is zero degrees and we move at 25 degrees. So, yeah. Really interesting. When we talk about angles, it can be so confusing because it depends what you're using as a reference point whether you're using zero degrees as a reference point or whether you're using 90 degrees. Very confusing. So it brings us back to this drawing here that if your grinder, let's just say you're using a steel USG grinder and you're dressing the stone. Now, if you're dressing the stone and you don't have templates like I demonstrated and even the templates aren't perfect, 
But if you're out a couple of degrees here, your file is not going to match. And if your file is not going to match, you're going to do unnecessary strokes to try and uh, get that uh, back into uh, the right shape as the same as the file shape. So a little bit unnecessary work. It's a little bit the same uh, if you made the mistake, let's just say you mate sharpened some chains up on a grinder and you went to hand file them and a file being, let's just say that a file is almost perfectly round like that. So, and let's just say that he used a grinder and the C shape wasn't perfectly round. So in other words, if you're using a grinder, you might find out that this C shape here could have a slight variation in the file shape. They don't follow each other. And this is why I don't like using a grinder and then a file or vice versa. If I'm going to grind a chain, I'll use a grinder and grind all those chains with the grinder. If I've got chains that I file, then I'll only use a file to avoid misalignment of the shape of the C-shape. And that is extremely uh, uh, the problem that you'll find out with Hexa, is that if you're going to use a file on Hexa, stay with the file. Don't grind Hexa and then use a file because you'll find out that they won't match up. So that's on a uh, steel hexer. And I did the experiment, the same experiment where I took this particular chain. I'll just try and find the mark that I put on here. Okay. This is it here. I marked it in red. So what I did... This chain here is was a full standard full chisel. And it was the one I used in the demonstration. I think it was either number three or four of Hexa that I ground this with my wheel. And I even used a Allen key. And I'll see whether this shows up to actually show you that it was pretty good. So... A little bit difficult to try and hold this. Almost you need three hands. So if that's the hexa and we get an Allen key, this is a 5 mil Allen key. And you can see that that's pretty good. So the shape is pretty good. It's as best as what you're going to get. But... It still could be a degree out or something like that. If it is slightly out, when you put the file in there, and I did that, I found out that I needed, it would have been about 10 passes. We'll just see whether you can see this. It's not even perfect. It feels sharp, but running the file through there, still means that I had to do at least 10 passes to try and get that file to be exactly the same profile. Because as I said, no matter how good you are refacing a hexa grinding wheel, it will never match perfectly as what this file would be. This file would be yeah down to the last couple of thou it'd be so dead accurate in its in its hexagonal shape when you're grinding using a grinding wheel you'll never get that accuracy uh and and the other thing is you wouldn't even try and get that accuracy because let's just say you spent a long time trying to get that accuracy you know you're a perfectionist you would find out that after you sharpened a half a dozen chains you're going to have to uh re uh grind the uh, wheel again and there is another chain that's also even worse uh, than grinding hexa as far as accuracy is, is concerned 
and that's square ground. So you can get this little jig, and you may have seen it by square ground. Uh, this, is, this isn't the exact jig. This is one I made up. That you put your chain on here, and you shape your grinding wheel for square ground. Now, problem with that is you've got to constantly reshape the wheel to try and keep uh, the square ground in really good, uh, and you need really high quality wheels as well. So it's not something that I think that's it's ever going to take off because there's a lot of mucking around. The hexagrind, it's pretty straightforward. And as I said, you're better off uh, if you do grind, if you do take your time, as I demonstrated to do the hexagrind, just grind your chains with that grinding wheel if you're using the file if you went out and brought the kit that comes with the file then i suggest that you stick with the file because no matter how good you are now now the other thing this is another thing when you sit the file in here i remember reading on one of the forums uh when hexa uh came out and they showed the hexagonal profile and as I mentioned in one of the other videos, uh, Husqvarna have, has had the hex cut, X cut, and that's been out for quite a while. So having this very pointy uh, uh, tooth on the end, having this angle come down here is, is not something that's unique to still. Still just sort of changed, modified it a little bit different than the Husqvarna X cut. So it's not something new. And the other thing is, even if you've got a brand new full chisel chain, don't even think of trying to put a hexa into uh, a hexa file into that uh, full chisel chain and think that you're going to grind a hexa grind using the full chisel chain uh, with the file because you'll be there all day. It just doesn't fit properly. And the other thing is, and I've got one here. Uh, I've got a what they call a butterfly. The problem is, if you're using a butterfly, I've got another one here, that this profile here needs to be perfectly dead flat as it is on hexa. Because if it's not perfectly dead flat, the hexa file is not going to fit properly. And if you actually look at the hexa, as I'd mentioned before, you'll find out that the hexa is really dead flat on the bottom of the gullet. And it brings me to another point. So, okay, let's just say that we're going to stick with filing. Filing's the way to go. Okay, so you've brought your hexa and you're going to just use a file. Can you still make a mistake? Because in one of the forums, one guy turned around and said, oh, hex is for dummies, you know. That's for people that don't know how to use a file. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. That statement is totally incorrect. Because when using a round file, there's only a few mistakes you can make. A round file is round. No matter how you twist it this way or that way, it's still going to fit in with that nice curvature that round curvature. So you can't make that mistake putting it in. The only mistake you can make, you might drop it 10 degrees up or a little bit this way and you may be a little bit, uh, yeah, let's just say you're filing 30 degree angle. You might be out a couple of degrees. So the, And the only other thing is maybe you're filing too low down into the gullet or maybe you're filing too high up. So they're the little mistakes that you can make uh, with a round file. So the mistakes that you can make with the hexa, and believe me, you can make the mistakes, is that, and I'll see if I can demonstrate that actually, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do, but if I can demonstrate it, uh, it will, uh, is that if you don't place the file in there and hold it correctly, so in other words, okay, let's just say that, we'll see whether you can see this really good, maybe over Let's just say the file's in there like that and you and you and you file in like that crooked. So that's something that 
you can make a mistake filing crooked like that. So you've got to make sure that when you place the file in, that it's sitting... I dropped the key. That the file is sitting dead flat. So your posture... So in other words, you've got the chain like this. And... You've got to make sure... Now, on the file, as I said, you've got the ridge facing up. So you've got to make sure that you've got your angle correctly, so your 25-degree angle. So normally what I would do... I made this little jig here because one thing I hate about sharpening chains by file is this chain is rock solid. It's got no movement whatsoever. And doing hexa, you don't want any movement, so... Yeah, I prefer to do it not on the chainsaw because I could have five or six chains. Okay, so when you place this in there and you've got your 25 degree... I've got actually 25 degree marks. I'll just see whether you can see them. If you look over the, the side here, you'll see these little marks here. So they've got 25 degree markings and 30 degree markings. So... It means that while I'm filing, when I place the file in there, all I've got to do is just tilt. Uh, I can see the angle. You can't see it from there, but I can see that mark on there. So I know that I'm in my 25 degree uh, mark. So you've got to make sure that the file's not twisted, that it's definitely sitting on the bottom. And that line, that mark that's on that file is facing vertical. And make sure that you hold it nice and straight. No twisting. If you put that file in there slightly twisted to the left or the right, you're going to change the geometry and it's not going to sharpen properly. So be aware of that. Yeah, just please be aware of that. That's probably as much as what I can say about the hexa with the filing. There's many mistakes that you can make in grinding or filing. You just need to be aware of those. And you need to make sure that you're consistent when you're holding the file, pushing the file forwards, not twisting it to the left, not twisting it to the right. Because a round file is much more forgiving. It doesn't matter if you twist it to the left or the right. You're not going to make any mistakes. The mistakes you make with a round file is up, down, left, right. And as I say, you may be filing too high or you're filing too low into the gullet. So they're the mistakes you can make with a round file. So the person that sort of said, oh, you know, hex is for dummies. Well, no. Hexa, you can make mistakes as well. And if you make a mistake in hexa and you don't hold it properly and it doesn't create a sharp edge on here. So this is the other thing when you're filing. When you file, if you hold the file, so let's just say we're filing this tooth here, it's hexa, and you're filing the tooth. If the file is tilted the wrong way, there'll be a little gap between the file and the edge of the tooth. That's why you've got to have the file as parallel with the angle as possible. Because the moment that you have a slight little gap this is just exaggerating. The moment you've got a little bit of a gap like that, so in other words, and let's see whether you can illustrate that. If there's a little, if the file's tilted that way and it's not, it's not touching the edge, then the edge will never be, become sharp. And if the edge never becomes sharp, you go, oh, oh, I don't like this. This isn't cutting very well. So it wasn't the chain. It was the operator. It doesn't know how to file properly. So... You have to make sure, and that's why it's a great idea that after you do file a chain, try and take the time to pick the chain up. Uh, yeah, just, just pick the chain up and inspect it. Make sure that the cutting edges are sharp. Generally, you can your, your eyes are pretty good, and if your eyes aren't that good, get some powerful reading glasses or something like that. Like, I've got to have reading glasses, so... You, you can feel a sharp point. You can look at it and feel it. You can tell that it's sharp. You don't have to be Einstein to figure out what's blunt and what's what's not. Now, look, I hope that information helps on Hexa. So just to briefly recap before we go, if you're, 
using a steel USG grinder with the hexa wheel or whether you converted a uh, Oregon style grinder using a grinding wheel as I did in my videos stick with that if you decide that you want to use a file use a file and stick with that avoid swapping between file and grinder because the grinder profile will never ever match up the file perfectly there'll be some differences and those differences will mean that you've got to push extra strokes on the file to create the new profile i don't care how good a machinist you are or how good you dress the wheel it'll never be perfect as close to the hexagonal uh, shape that comes out of the factory on the tooth it'll be close but you'll, you might be a thou or two out. And if you're a couple of thou out, it means that you've got to do extra passes. And, and that is exactly the same when we're talking about a grinder and a round file. Doesn't matter how good you are dressing the wheel on a, a round file, which is a slight U-shape. So you get these little cards when you dress a when you're doing a uh, round file in like so let's just say i'm going to dress a grinding wheel and we use one of these cards and we get this nice rounded shape like this no matter how good you are you'll never get it perfectly as good as what the file is and the other thing is by the time that you've ground a chain it'll be slightly out anyway and that's why i don't like swapping between files and grinders it's either one or the other, unless I'm put in the situation that I've got no other choice. But that never happens anyway, because always when I go out in the field, I take about a half a dozen chains. And if they last one to two hours, I'm not going to be out there 12 hours. So I've always got more than enough chains to take with me. Even if I damage one or two of them, I still got reserve of enough chains. Worst case scenario, I've got to dress it with a file. But as I said, in most cases, I I tend to avoid that so I hope that it's probably the last in the series of hexa I don't think I could go into any more detail about hexa the only thing that I will do in the future in the next uh, uh, is have a really good shoot out uh, chopping wood so what I need to do is I'm going to cut down a nice uh, timber cutting season is only about six weeks away again from us and what I'm going to do is grab a nice log about one foot in diameter and I'm going to do a series of cuts using semi chisel, full chisel, hexa and even a skip tooth. And I'm going to compare the results of uh, in time and hexa should come out in front. So I'm going to use brand new chains. I've purchased them already. So I'm going to use one of these, in this kit there's two hexes, so I'm going to use them straight out of the box. So that's factory ground, even though there's a lot of people who say factory ground. The only thing that I will do is do a slight check on the rakers, the depth gauges, but I, I really do prefer to use factory grind because that is comparing one against the other. But I can't imagine... Uh, and I'm, I'm going to use only steel chains. I'm not going to use other competitors because Hexa is steel. So I want to compare a brand new unused steel Hexa chain against a full chisel uh, steel chain against a full chisel skip chain and a semi chisel uh, chain all on the same saw, all on the same bar. And we'll find out what the results will be there. And that will be the end of Hexa as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've been getting some great comments. A lot of people really like the videos, the detail that I go into. I've been rambling on almost for a half an hour. So that's quite a long time. But I do remember when Hexa first came out, it was very difficult to get some information. And I hope that the videos that I do that... I do give the correct information. Uh, I'm not perfect. If I do make a mistake, uh, I'll be the first person to admit it. 
and hopefully I don't make mistakes in my presentations and the information I give you. I try my hardest to give you the, the correct information that's out there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.